Okay, my spoons. I've been using spoons quite a bit lately. The last three times I've fished a lake, I've caught walleye two different lakes on spoons. Uh, it's kind of a weird year uh, catching walleye a little bit deeper because where we live, the lakes are pretty stained. Um, this is my favorite spoon. Binks, one ounce, Pro Series spoons for uh, white bass and wiper. And then for the smaller white bass and then the walleye and sauger, I've been using a half ounce bink spoon. They seem to prefer it. And then that's, I like the fire tiger for the deep, I'm sorry, the shallow stain lakes around here. And then when I go to like southern Missouri, northern Arkansas, fish bull shoals, I like a white spoon. And again, I prefer the binks pro series spoon. And I just use a one ounce at bull shoals because when I'm down there, I'm fishing super deep. Um, and then I got some moonshine shiver minnows ready for the next time I go to Bull Shoals. Haven't did real good around here in the same lakes on them. And then, and then just some assortment of other spoons that I've had over over the years uh, that I'll use if I'm in an area where I think I might get hung up and I don't want to lose my bink spoon. But the bink spoon is made out of tin in lieu of lead. So it says it flutters a little bit different. And it does seem like I do catch more fish on the binks. My crankbaits, I got three different boxes for the crankbaits. I have a box with the, you know, primarily a fire tiger and colors like that that work well in stain lakes for around here. Um, I have several crankbaits I've bought over the years and kept over the years, which is good to do even if you don't use them uh, because if you're fishing in an area where it's snaggy. Probably my go-to crankbaits are the Flicker Shad by Berkeley when I'm trolling, the Rapala DT series uh, when I'm casting, that's a DT-10. I probably catch most of my walleye in Missouri and Kansas throwing crankbaits on a Rapala DT6 and Fire Tiger or Gray and Black. And then I like the Storm Red Eye Shad lipless crankbait. I, I like it because no matter what depth you want to fish, you can fish it. If you want to fish it two feet deep, you fish it two feet deep. If you want to fish it deeper, you just let it sink and reel it. Whereas with a deep like this is a Rapala DT10, it dies to 10 feet, that's it. So it's, it's handy to have this on your boat if you see something busting shad or whatever and want to run it just below the surface you can. Or if you want to fish a hump 15 feet deep you can. Another lure I like is the Bomber Model A. You know, get a couple different sizes. It is really good to troll for walleye, long line for walleye, and then long line for hybrid striped bass like it. Um, I've actually been to Bull Shoals uh, one week and that was the, the only crankbait I could get a bite on it. It was a white one, of course. I found the Rapala DT6 crankbait. What I like about the Rapala DT crankbaits are they're the most user-friendly crankbait. If you're going to cast, um, they cast far, they're weighted well, and they don't flick around usually and hook your line as you're casting it. You know, like this bomber, I get so frustrated trying to cast them. I don't, maybe bass fishermen have a better luck. Um, and then when, when I'm trolling flicker shads, I like to have triple grip hooks. If you look at Mustad triple grip hooks, they're bent in a little bit on the hook. So when you're long line trolling or pulling a dipsy diver or something and you hook a fish, it seems like it, it the, the hook stays in its mouth longer and I lose a lot less fish when I use a triple grip. So if I'm trolling a lure, I'll usually take the hooks off and put triple grip hooks on it if they don't have them on there. I think the Berkeley Flicker Shads come with them on there, but I don't think this Bomber Model A came with them on there. I switched them out. Next box is my minnow shaped crankbaits, which earlier in the year, and I, I don't really use them much. I mean, sometimes just to try something different, I'll, I'll troll a minnow body crankbait. I do, I have been using the 
with some success this spring jerk baits. I have a bass fishing friend of mine that showed me how to use them. And I I like this Rapala. I'm not sure the name of it. It's a fairly new new Rapala. It seems to be one of the easiest ones to use and throw. And then as far as like the large minnow baits that I've caught big walleye on is the Bomber Long A at Bull Shoals. I mean probably on a white one of course. And then the Yozuri Crystal Diver is a is a really really good lure that digs really deep. I mean this one here probably go 25 feet on the troll. Here's my clear lake, or my, I call it my Bull Shoals box. Um, I, I really like white crank baits and clear lakes, and I've had some really good luck with them. Um, last few times I've been there, I haven't did so well on them, so they're kind of a mess. My go-to bait at clear lakes when I'm trolling for walleye is probably the glass shad rat. Um, there's two different sizes, I believe. This is probably a five, and this is a seven. I probably did my best on a five. Um, and then the bomber, bomber model A. You know, like I said on my other box, I've had some pretty good luck with it and white. Again, I changed the hooks out. One thing I wanted to mention too about the the glass shad wrap. There was a PWT tournament that was won with the white glass shad wrap on Milford Lake, which is a stained lake. So uh, these crankbaits must also work on stained lake. I just I haven't had too much success on the white ones.